Four. This is one more. Welcome everybody to episode 25 of Otra Por Favor. Otra Por Favor. Uh, join us. We're going to continue our talk with David Blue Garcia on film, soccer, and other things. Thank you for listening and hope you guys enjoy. You were asking about uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Well, actually, uh, I think David had some questions about oh, yeah. Tejano. I, oh, the Tejano. I was just going to ask you how... How difficult was it to portray the uh, the cultural experiences of the uh, Mexican and like Latin communities without like making making it a, a stereotypical? Yeah, I mean, we 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 didn't want to make it stereotypical. I mean, although according to who you ask, right. I mean, some people are going to say they're going to have complaints and say it's stereotypical. And one of the things, one of the biggest complaints about the film is like, well, why did you have to tell the story? of Mexicans as the cartel, right? Uh -huh. Typical, right? No, every, you know, everyone does that. Well, a couple of reasons. Action. Yeah. Guys. Yeah. That's I want to make, that. make an <laughs> yeah. action movie. So yeah. what's more exciting than <laughs> yeah. the cartel? The, the other reason is, so I was making a, a really low budget movie. So what do you do when you're making a low budget movie and we don't have a lot of money? Well, you got to use what you have. What did I have? I had my parents who lived in the Valley. I had... Um, my family friends who owned all the land that you see in the movie, all the big farm machines, the barns. Um, I had people who had access to the international bridge to Mexico that I could film on. They let me film there. That's cool. So I was like, I'm going to use all that. Mm -hmm. So that's why there's that subject matter. You know, it's kind of because I had it. And, um, you know, I, I worked with a lot of actors from the Valley. And I worked with, for instance... Um, Adelio um, was played by a, a Valley native who actually was born and raised in Matamoros, but also went to school in Brownsville. Mm. So he really understood. His name is Adrian Gonzalez, mm -hmm. and um, he he really understood both sides. And he went to school with those guys. Like he went to school with those tough guys that sure. were, you know, kind of maybe in the cartel, maybe not. And he knew those guys, so that he just told me he was like, "I'm just." copying my brother's friends, you know, like that's how they talked and that's how they acted. Um, so, I mean, I think that brings a, a legitimacy oh, to the yeah. performance. So I relied a lot on the, on the, uh, the actors, um, knowing and doing their own research and bringing an idea, um, of authenticity for their characters. And, and I talked with them about it too. Um, I also relied a lot on my actors <clears throat> because a lot of Tejano is in Spanish mm -hmm. And I don't speak Spanish fluently. I speak very little Spanish. You know how um, to say cuss words at least. <laughs> <laughs> I learned from you guys on the soccer field. <laughs> on the soccer field so. But uh, <laughs> I know when I did a bad bad play. Because you guys <laughs> I will tell you. <laughs> 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 yeah. But uh, no, I, I relied on them to to translate their dialogue and 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 put in the what you know we call south texas slang you know um which is spanish is a, it's a little different than maybe where oh, you're yes, from for sure. you yeah. guys have a totally different way of talking yes. yeah totally different vocabulary all the slang in el salvador is yes. probably different than mexico yes. different than south texas so but um anyway that's how we did it yeah so you're talking about uh, like budget and working with the resources you have you filmed one of the scenes or several of the scenes in your high school that was used as a immigration detention, uh, not detention mm -hmm. center, but like I would say a checkpoint. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I, I couldn't close down a real working checkpoint. Right. I couldn't ask them to like, because there were 24 hours, you yeah. know, they're not going to let me right. film in there. They did let me film on the bridge, but they weren't going to let me film in the checkpoint. So, mm -hmm. but I went to the checkpoint and I was like, okay, it's just a hallway like some cinder block wall, maybe a window, mm -hmm. like American flag. Like <laughs> this could be anywhere. You yeah. Know? yeah. So, um, and I, I was scouting. I was scouted a lot of different buildings all over the Valley, but I went to my high school and I was just like, if we just take out the Coke machines, take down the bulletin boards, take down the Cardinal, you know, because the Harlingen Cardinals, yeah. mm -hmm. then it looks like, a, you know, 
checkpoint. You know, and then we went to, uh, used to work at the movie theater mm-hmm. at Cinemark 16 in Harlingen. So I sent somebody over there and I said, okay, tell them, tell them David Garcia, who used to work there back in 2000, the year 2000. <laughs> I was like, tell him he needs, uh, they're called stanchions, which are those like little divide, the things that divide the lines yeah, yeah. when you're waiting in line. I was like, tell him we need to borrow a bunch of those things. How did they go? <laughs> yeah, they, they came back with a bunch of those. <laughs> oh, boy, that's right. He so came back like, with like like a big ass yeah. thing of popcorn. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. listen, just the name worked because that's what you said to tell him, right? Yeah. David Blue Garcia. Him, yeah. David Garcia. Yeah. Well, they remembered me and I, I had kept in contact. Like every time I went back to the valley, uh, I would go to the movies with my parents and I'd say hi to the manager. And, hey, how you doing? You know, Mr. Brady, like, yeah, you know, has, has a family or whatever. And, and it just kind of like he remembered me, yeah. you know, so. It opened a lot of doors being a local, you know. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then getting like I didn't have to pay for those things. If you're on a normal movie, you'd have to rent. Yeah. Everything that you see, you know. That's a beautiful thing, you know. Like yeah. with with the low budget that you had, limited resources, you actually had plenty of resources because you were back home, mm-hmm. and the community seemed to rally around your your cause, which is really cool. Really cool to hear. Especially like it's wild that you that you were actually uh, filmed on the bridge, on the international bridge. Yeah. While it was a functioning bridge, you yeah. know. Like, talk <laughs> to us a little bit about that. Like, yeah. how, how does that even work? <laughs> when, I, when I'm on a bridge, there's like so many people, so many yeah. cars going by. Yeah, and then like, you just want to get out of there. You just want right? to get out yeah. of there. You're kind of <laughs> stuck, but to film, yeah. like, what is that like? Um, well, I mean, well, it was like one of the last days of shooting, actually. And, and I remember... Um, that was another thing where it was like, just tell him David Garcia. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It was, it was, there was, it was a script. It was like, hold on, let me pull the David Garcia card. No, David it Garcia. was a little more complicated than that. It was like someone, I talked to somebody, I talked to my friend Cale Johnson, and I was like, dude, how do I film on the bridge? Because he's, yeah. you know, he's very, he's a valley guy. You know, his family's been down there for generations. And he's like, you know what? Sarah Trollinger. Who I grew up with, she, her family owns the bridge to Pro- Progreso. Uh-huh. And it's Dang. like the only privately owned bridge it's left a, on the border. It's a small, really. Bridge. Out of yeah, the 2,000 gr- mile way. border, yeah. one bridge is this private. It's privately owned. I guess their family built it. Okay. And then they, they, they allow the government to, this is what I understand. Right. This may be incorrect, but they allow the government to function as an international bridge, but the family still has sor- sort of a jurisdiction over it, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, so we talked to Sarah Trollinger. I didn't even do any of this, by the way, because like I was busy directing the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a producer, Amy Soto. She was kind of running around and getting all these things ready. Okay. So she armed with this information. She went to the bridge, mm-hmm. the, the customs agents, and just basically presented our case. Mm-hmm. And, and they said yes. Which is crazy. Like everybody in Austin, every producer I talked to, they were saying, like, "You're not gonna, you're not gonna film on a bridge." Like what? Did they? Did you at least like let them know what was the movie about, or they were just like, "Yeah, yeah, why not?" I think we told them a little bit, but I we didn't want to tell them too much yeah. because, like, right, if right. they were like, you know, about they drugs, feel smart, certain way yeah, about yeah. the movie, yeah, you know, they don't want to. I don't want them to think it's like anti yeah. uh, customs or anti border right. patrol or right. anything, which it's not. Did you have to present some of the movie to the agencies there since no, you portrayed them a lot? We just got the, we got them, no, wow. we didn't. <laughs> I, I had the producer, Amy, doing clearances, which means like she's getting all the paperwork and the contracts yeah. so that we can't get sued later. Right, and right, right. I think we did all the right stuff. And hey, shout out Amy, Amy Soto. Yeah, Where are you she, at, Amy? She was, a, <laughs> she was a trooper, man. She came in uh, two weeks before, um, two or three weeks before I started shooting. Because I fired the other producer. That's a long story. But <laughs> oh, we've got time. Do you want to talk about it? I, we, I'm not in a rush. Long story short, I, part, <laughs> I parted ways with the producer that was on it who wasn't doing anything as far as contracts and all these things that I needed. And um, I, I got in contact with Amy, and she was in New Orleans. And I told her a price. She was like, I'm, I'll come down. So she drove down from New Orleans to the Valley, never been there. Oh, wow. um, and Dang, that's just came in and just armed with a bunch of contracts and just a good smile and you know good attitude and she went around and just like got it all done dude <laughs> like every location that i was like i want to film here she would just go get it how did you hear from amy 
Um, I, uh, one of the actors, the guy who played Abuelo, mm -hmm. um, Hector Uribe, he had worked with her on a, on a film and he said, you know, you should, you should try Amy. She's like, she really impressed me, you know? So it was just all word of mouth like that. And that's how we got a lot of the crew members too. But back to your question about filming on the bridge, it was really interesting because we were a really small film crew, um, but they still needed to do background checks on everybody, right? And uh, <laughs> <laughs> how yeah. do you say that? So you had problems because, with background checks? No, like because you know he's already having to do all of it, all of this. Yeah. And now he has to yeah. get background checks. Like, yeah. Come on. So, <laughs> so I but I guess they paid for it. So like Amy, okay. she gathered up everyone's like passports or whatever. Okay. She took it to the customs and then they ran the background checks and they said, okay, you guys are clear to film, but not these two guys. <laughs> you see? That's why. I was like, <laughs> there, were like, there were two guys on my film crew. Uh, I'm not going to say the name. No, of course not. No, no, but sorry. one was an actor and he was supposed to be in the scene. Oh, no. uh, and the other was like one of the crew members and they, they just were not allowed on the board. Did he have papers or no? They both had papers, okay. but they, they had warrants or something going on. <laughs> And, and I, I didn't even ask. I was just like, it was like towards the end of shooting. And I'm just like, there's so many pro when you're directing and producing a movie, everything is a problem. Yeah. Everything is a problem. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. you got to roll with the punches. That's why yeah. I was saying that. Like, oh shit, like you'd still have to get back crunching. <laughs> so many problems. So I'm like, okay, well now the actor can't be in the scene. So I just write him out of the scene. That wasn't that big a deal. And this other guy can't be there, whatever, you know? So, um, but we go and film and, like sometimes I need like there to be no people on the bridge. I need it to be empty. So I just like have somebody stand at the, at the, we're on the American side where mm -hmm. the Americans are crossing South. They're going, you know, North to South. So we would just have someone like run interference and just keep people from like going on the bridge and just like talk to them, you know, not because we weren't supposed to like upset the actual flow of the yeah. bridge. But we're just like, oh, we're just talking to it, whatever. What was the the, yeah. the talk later? You want to buy some Airbud Life? Or yeah, what? yeah. It's just like, I don't know what I don't know what they were doing, but I would just be like, keep the people over there, you know. And then I'd film, I'd film, I'd film, and then we let a bunch of people pass. Um, and then some of the people are just in the movie because they just are walking through, and we would have to get them to sign papers. <laughs> like, will you be in this movie? Oh my god! Yeah. yeah it's, Hopefully, it's like there's not burn into their leaf because you know. It's ridiculous, and we never went to. Um, we never filmed on the Mexican side coming north because we didn't want to also have to deal with the Mexican immigration. Like, <laughs> Another animal. <laughs> just, I don't want, don't want to deal with it. So we, but we did film in, we did film in Mexico. Like we, okay. I went to Mexico and filmed some street scenes of just him running through the streets or whatever, but I didn't have permission or anything, but who cares? It doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. He's giving I wasn't, I wasn't using like a, I wasn't stopping anything. Right. Yeah, it was right. just a little camera and right going. So did you, um, so what if I would say now going to the background thing what if it was like Javi the one that I mean I'm saying like for you because you have to deal with so many problems what if that problem would have been Javi the one person that couldn't be clear from oh, his man. background I'd be fucked <laughs> 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 I'm so glad that Patrick Mackey had not been uh, I don't know he had his papers right <laughs> yeah that's so yeah, crazy. I mean, and, and Patrick, I mean, I couldn't have made the movie without a guy like Patrick yeah. uh, as the lead. I mean, he was just, you know, he, he's a, we gave him a producer credit as well, an associate producer credit because he was just gung-ho. Like, he was there every day. I mean, he's he's in almost every scene, but there sometimes we, we weren't filming with him, but he would still be there, you know, and he would um, be hanging around and helping and, and all that. So he was, he did all his own stunts. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. He, he actually was, it was a problem because <laughs> he was starting to get beat up. <laughs> like every, too much. Yeah, yeah, like too earlier much. on in the movie, he just started like, there was one scene where uh, we're filming him. He has to try to climb the border wall, yeah. you know, and he, he's, he's like method actor. So he's really going for it. He's really like trying to climb up. I was like, don't really climb up. Just look like you're climbing up. And he's like, oh, I'm going to do it. And he's like climbing up and climbing up. And then he like slides down, but Ooh, it's rusty. And yeah, you're going to cut your Cuts his arm, you know, and it's like, it's all bleeding and stuff like that. And <laughs> Are you looking at it? You're like, oh. <laughs> one, time, <laughs> one time he did a roll. He had a, we, we were using real guns. Because yeah. we didn't have like f um, foam guns. Like mm -hmm. you can buy like a foam stunt gun or whatever. But that costs like, you know, it costs like a hundred bucks. So I'm saving money, you know. Yeah. 
Yeah. So we're just using real guns all the time, which is ridiculous. <laughs> You're in Texas. <laughs> yeah. Of course, no bullets or anything like that, but we're, you use you, safety. You clear it, make sure there's no bullets, no clips, nothing like that. But he, he hit his head on the gun, <laughs> so he's, like, bleeding. On, you know, <laughs> and uh, um, basically, he was just getting more and more wounds throughout the movie. But it just kind of, like, went with the character, I guess. True. I mean, he looked pretty looked messed real. up. Yeah. He looked like he, he went through some look rugged. Through hell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So he was he's like, shout you, out Javi, man. That's yeah. crazy. He's like, you want some action? <laughs> Do some action. And there's another good story, like, Patrick Mackey. Um, you know, there, there's a snake at the end of the movie. Okay. This guy... Uh, the cartel guy, Adelio, he's dying. He's got a knife, oh, spoiler. He's dying and there's like a snake near his head, like coming out of his head, it's like slithering off the, out of the ground. And that was something that Patrick, he just came to me. I was filming that scene and he just came to me with a bucket. He's like, hey, Dave, look. And was, inside the bucket is a snake. I'm like, okay, cool, man. And he's like, dude, we should put this in the scene. And I was like... <laughs> I was like, okay. And so, and then I, I thought it was a good idea. And then I, it wasn't a coral snake. It looked like a coral snake, which is like a, you know, red and yellow kill a fellow yeah. mm -hmm. poison, highly yeah, poisonous, right. but it was red and black. So we're all like red and black friend to Jack. Okay. So this is not poisonous. We convinced the actor, <laughs> Adrian Gonzalez, like Adrian, this, this little like ch children's rhyme. Yeah. He's going to tell us that this is a safe snake. <laughs> Are you okay with that? And he's just like, uh, I guess it's a, <laughs> I mean, this is probably all very like not safe, but no, it it was <laughs> the snake was fine, and we put it yeah. we put it near his head, and it was scared, so it started sw you know slithering, slithering away, away from his wow. head, and and he, Adrian's just like he's like acting very professional, <laughs> and then I say cut, and he's like get it away from me, <laughs> you know, but Man. that was uh, Patrick, dude. He was just always coming up with ideas. And, That's awesome. You know, but he just found that snake somewhere. He just found a snake. Oh, shit. It sounds like he's <laughs> full of energy, man, just <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. You need people like that on your team. Yeah, that's true. I mean, just like, like down for it, you know. Like, yeah. Yeah, some. I mean, I would say I'm, I'm. I've never been on the movie set where you're actually filming, but I, I can see some people were like, "Not nah, my role. I'm done." You know, my it's my part. My that's job. it. But I, I can see like the people that you work with. They're all like, "Hey, what else do you need?" You know, should we go get the tacos for everybody because they're hungry? Or how is that? You know, that's what happens when. You know, you have unions, and and rightfully so. It's a safety thing. You know, you have people, like, doing one job, you know. But even when you don't have unions, when it's like a, when it's a job, when it's a, just a professional job, you're not going to do something for someone else. Like you're going to do your job. And it's often, like, very frustrating, actually, yeah. as a director, when you're doing a low-budget thing and you need something moved or you need to do something, but you can't find the person that will do it, you know. That's crazy. Because it's, that's not their department. Like for instance, if uh, if I needed to, if you needed to adjust that, uh -huh. you couldn't do it, and I couldn't do it. You would need the person, the sound guy, to come to and do, do it, it, right? Yeah. Which makes sense. Listen, yeah. but on a low budget movie like this, no, yeah. you can't. Got to wear different hats. You have to wear different hats. Yeah. So every crew member was doing everything. Yeah. They were all helping each other, and it was like really, really awesome. That's cool. Because yeah. there's a lot of people you also like knew, so it was easier to get that, or it was people that like. Half of the people that you knew, the other half you didn't know? No, all the crew I knew, um, it, I, I worked with them because I worked in video in Austin. So I had I had crew people that I, they were just used to working with me. They knew they knew my energy. They knew my intensity. You know, <laughs> they knew how to handle me. Uh, so I invited those guys down. And uh, a couple of them I didn't know. It was like a girlfriend that was new. I had just met. And she came and did production design um, on the film and costumes. Mm -hmm. And then Amy, the producer I had just met, and then the assistant director, Jacob Miguel, I uh, hired him last minute, and he mm -hmm. came down. I didn't meet him until the first day of shooting. Oh, wow. He drove down from Austin. Your assistant director. My assistant director, which is one of the most important roles on a set. Mm -hmm. they, they help you run the set. They help you get everyone motivated, and they tell everyone what's going on, and they schedule, and they do all these important things. Um, I had an assistant director and he quit on me like a week mm -hmm. before Shit. it was just another problem. I was like, Oh my God, you know? And then I found this guy, Jacob and he came down and he was awesome. That's good. And I put him in the movie. He kind of like, I don't think he's got any Latino in him, but he looks like he could be <laughs> yeah. sort of. So I, I, he, he played like a, one of the cartel guys, he died like three times. In the movie, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I was just like, Oh, I need another guy to die in the background. Jacob. <laughs> 
He gets shot. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so you want a snake or you want a gun? <laughs> <laughs> and another friend of mine was also on the crew, uh, Rafael Flores. Mm-hmm. And he's the guy who plays Cesar. I don't know if you remember the character who's the assassin, the cartel assassin, yeah, yeah, yeah. who's always like, eating tacos and yeah, stuff like yeah. that. And he's like, he's like, uh, he he ends up dying. But um, <laughs> that guy was the second assistant director, and so he was also on the crew, you know. And then, but some days I'd be like, all right, you're acting today, you know. So put on your wardrobe, <laughs> tacos. Yeah, and go, go eat your tacos. <laughs> uh, and and he was great. He was great to work with because um, also from the Valley, also from okay. Brownsville. And, you know, we shot at his like parents. Uh, um, they have like a, a used, you know, car yard, like a junkyard down in Brownsville that we shot at. So it was all, it's like a big family event, you know, when you're, when you're doing a movie like that. And there's so many people that I'm indebted to, you know, it's insane. I mean, we're used to just watching the movie, right? We don't really right. know what happens in the back the end. Man, it sounds like crazy a amount of work. A lot of work, yes. dude. A lot of work. Like, uh, here's another story. Um, so, like, the scene where we're filming where he's crossing the river, mm-hmm. right, Javi? Um, that's actually, it wasn't on the Rio Grande River. We shot it on the Arroyo, which okay. is, like, north. But uh, it's like a shipping channel. It looks the same. It looks the same. So that's why I shot it there, you know, because it looks like the Rio Grande. And I can't actually shoot on the Rio Grande because then I'd have to alert the Border Patrol and all this shit. And they probably wouldn't let me do it. Um, <laughs> you know, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I asked um, my neighbor, my parents' neighbor, he, I, I, you know, what's his name? What's his name? Well, Mr. Lumbreras is how I know him. I forgot his first name at the moment. I'm forgetting. But he's a Border Patrol agent. And, uh, you know, he had a boat. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, hey, Mr. Rubin, but it's like, uh, I'm filming, we'll oh, I'm filming on this Arroyo. Hey, you put it in a movie. I need, I need, <laughs> yeah, I need to film from a boat. You're like, would you come? And he was like, no problem. I'll bring it out there. Nice. And I was like, and I was like, okay, well, we're filming like on the Arroyo. And in the, in the Arroyo, it's just, it's kind of in the middle of nowhere. You know, there's yeah. not like a town or anything near there. So I said, well, I was trying to explain to him where we're filming. And he's like, oh, I know the spot. <laughs> I was like, you do and he's like yeah it's like the fishing spot here and blah 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 i was like okay and so i just trusted him and we went out we were filming like the sun is going down you know and uh and i i don't see him you know where's the boat where's the boat um because he had to he had to go in from another port and like drive the boat there like a couple miles Uh and i'm just like filming 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 the sun's going down i just keep filming and then i see him he he comes comes around the bend and and I had no time. Like the sun's going down, I had to film the whole scene, and I had to film him swimming out into the water and everything. And so I just stepped on. I just like stepped onto the boat, and I gave him quick direction about what we were doing. Mm-hmm. And I said, "Just follow." Like when ha- when Javi swims out, mm-hmm. just follow him very slowly with the boat. And he was like, "I got it." And then we just went and had the actor swim across the river. I mean, it's just like ridiculous. It's like one take. One, <laughs> it, was, it was one take. That's it was crazy. one take, and I just got a bunch of different angles. You know, yeah. Yeah. I just said, okay, stop and go. Let's go further away. Get a wide shot, mm-hmm. rolling. Stop. Okay, go closer again. Okay, act like you see the border patrol. Stop. You know, just like it was just like, dude, on a Hollywood movie, that would have taken two day, two or three days to film all that. You know, um, but we did it in like one hour. Al tiro, eh? <laughs> Al tiro. <laughs> yeah, and the guy just showed up like out of nowhere, you know. Like, just and he like showed up with the background music because he's yeah. pulling da, in. Da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> man, how was the, uh, I know like, how big was the crew, like member, number wise? Um, eight to ten. Okay. Including myself. So re- that's not very many people. It's very small. Not even a full soccer team. Yeah, not even a full soccer wow. team. <laughs> And depending on the day, we had more people on set, like extras, actors, right. mm-hmm. people like that. But in contrast, my first day on um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre in Bulgaria, 2020, this is my mm-hmm. my f- second movie, my first big break into the studio system. And I show up on set uh, last year and I look out and there's like, just like, it seems like a mile of trailers and trucks and Dang. people. And all. it's just, it seems like so many people. And I turned to the producer and I said, how many people are here? <laughs> He's like, how many are <laughs> people? And she, and she said, 
She's like, I, I think I ordered 190 lunches. <laughs> Dang. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Why That's are there so crazy. many people? Well, I mean, even like when you look at a movie, you don't never stay for the credits. But I actually, yeah. one day I was trying to keep count, man. I couldn't. But I would say, I mean, how many positions per person where everybody just like they already have their own designated you know spot where they have to work it just depends on the scene you know um there was a lot of people there that day because we were doing a car crash and there was like safety people there were stunt people there was seven cameras a lot of a lot of stuff going on um but i don't think every day was that many people okay but there's a lot of people that that i don't even see because they're they're in the accounting department and they're in the offices or they're, they're the people who built the sets mm -hmm. who like huge construct. You're in construction. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we do that in, in the film business too. And there's huge construction um, credits, you know, and these guys built all the sets for us mm -hmm. and I never see them, you know, Dang. they work while you sleep. <laughs> they work while we sleep. Yeah. <laughs> when I, they built a whole Texas town. Wow. Uh, Dang. For the movie. So wait, the, fil the filming was in Bulgaria. Filming was in Bulgaria, yes. So we were talking about, you. that was your Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That's your first big break after Tejano. Mm -hmm. how, how was that transition from, say, for example, you did Tejano, you know, you did the post-production, you know, you presented in pretty much everywhere you can in Texas and out of state as well. And then you now have a, a role like in a, a much bigger setting and it's your first break how when when did everything start for you as you got picked to do texas chainsaw massacre yeah i mean uh you know tejano came out 2017 or 2018 dude i don't remember 2018 but was it yeah um because i was trying to get back with my girlfriend around that time so my wife now my wife <laughs> well now. that's when you saw it Is that <laughs> i saw it like uh, literally two a remember. week before <laughs> I, uh, she sent me a message like, hey, let's do this. And I'm like, all right, let me put a ring on it. He's like, hold on. Literally, hold on. that's what happened. So I'm not kidding. It got you back kidding. together with your wife? Yeah. Well, now we're married. I mean, you know, Where's my cut? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I, I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I just got that, that diamond cut. It was expensive. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I'll get you, uh, you got a right there, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it has tapioca extra. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. So 2018, Tejano, going into Texas Chainsaw Master. Yeah. Was, was the well, timeline there? Nothing really happened. Uh, I think actually we premiered at 2017. It played in Austin 2018. Mm. And then uh, 2019, nothing happened. And then in 2020, we made the HBO deal and released on HBO Max and Go, um, which was the big break because that got that meant that people in Hollywood were seeing it. Yeah. Um, then when the pandemic started, I actually got a manager, uh, uh, inclusion management, and Javier Chapa, who's also from South Texas, reached out to me and they said, you know, like we want to represent you and we can we think we can help you in your career. Mm -hmm. Fast forward to July. Um, I'm talking with Legendary, uh, the studio, about a different movie um, that they want me to do. And they want to bring me in to develop that, which means, you know, I just work with the writer and develop the project. But it doesn't mean the movie is getting made yet. Um, and then I was, I guess I was top of mind. And uh, they called me uh, on a Thursday. I was going to go play soccer with you guys. <laughs> okay. There's another story behind that. But go ahead, go continue. <laughs> I'm sorry I missed the game. <laughs> oh, no, you didn't miss the game. You missed something else. <laughs> oh, did I? Yeah. But you, go ahead. Continue with your part. Oh, then. and uh, yeah, I. Uh, they called me and I was, and they said, you know, are you sitting down? And I was like, no, but okay. And <laughs> <laughs> Usually they say that when they're going to tell you something really I bad. Don't. Or really good. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, they, they let it all out. You know, they're filming in Bulgaria. They needed a director to come take over immediately. Wow. And I read the script that afternoon. I was on a plane two days later. Incredible, man. To Bulgaria. What did that feel like getting that call? It was bizarre. It was bizarre. And I was very, I wasn't excited. I was like scared. I was like, what the hell? Because it's a scary thing. You, you know, to direct a, a movie, it's a lot of work, right. mm -hmm. you know, and you don't, you want to be prepared. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of scary to go, get, just get thrown right into there. it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like you're getting thrown to the wolves and you just got to figure it out. No one does that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Most people, most directors work on a movie for 
three, six months before they're on set. Mm -hmm. I was on set within eight days of getting the call. So it was difficult. Yeah, it was very difficult. Man, cause, so we were planning to go on a boat party. And I think you were the one that first started, like, hey, guys, let's go on a boat party. Uh, oh, like, all right, right, cool. And then uh, we got worried because we see you like, hey, guys, I can't go. And mm -hmm. we were like, oh, man, so hopefully, like, something bad didn't happen to him. Or, you know, I was thinking, like, hopefully, like, COVID didn't get him or anyone <laughs> that he knows got him. And then I see you like, all right, guys, uh, and you did a post about going to Bulgaria to film Ch Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And at first I was like, hold on, hold on, what, what the heck? What? And everybody, like, literally, I think we all, we messaged everybody, we, we all talked, and we were like, dude, we were proud of you as you were probably on the way to Bulgaria. We were like, man, my boy's going to make it. Like, nice. we, were, we were feeling super good about you, like, in that aspect. For sure. We were, we were, trying, we were catching boats, and you were catching planes, man. <laughs> yeah, That's man. awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. No, we, de we definitely, uh, we, we, we have a lot of pride, man, for sure, in, in just seeing, seeing that you got that opportunity and seized it. Because one thing is getting the opportunity. Uh, the other thing is jumping on a plane with very little preparation compared to other, other films and just going for it. It's wild, man. Yeah. Well, I had been through Tejano, and I was like, well, I can't be any harder than that. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. For sure, for sure. <laughs> so, but no, I appreciate the support, guys, and, and I, I'm sorry I missed the party. I saw the pictures. It looked like a lot of fun. Oh, no. <laughs> like a lot of fun. I actually saw them. I think I was in Bulgaria, and I, I was like, I was all stressed out making the movie, and I was like scrolling, and I'm like, oh, look at all the, oh, all the having, fun. They're having and a good time. And we're over here. Yo perreo sola. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you know, it's a. It was nice to see like a, a taste of home, you know, while yeah. I was abroad with all the Bulgarians. How long? How long you were in Bulgaria? I mean, I was there till like two and a half months or something, That's three not, months for yeah. the first for the first bit of filming. Yeah. Then I went back to to Bulgaria. To Bulgaria. Yeah. And a couple weeks. And then, like, say from from, how do you feel now as as you went into this? you know, this bigger production that is obviously, you know, something that you didn't create from scratch and something that someone else created. So what, like, what was that for you when you were starting to direct or, or work with that project? Yeah, I mean, I had to, uh, you know, directing is, it's very, you know, it's very collaborative in a way. Um, I mean, there's one theory that the director has control of the movie and, and, and they do anything they want, and it's their f film. And, and the directors do get a lot of credit, but um, I mean, it's a huge collaboration. It's obviously a lot of people involved in making the movie, and a lot of creative people, and a lot of even non-creative people have influence on what you see in the in the film. But the director has the most influence because the decisions that you make, every decision goes through you. Unless you're, you're not doing well in the studio, takes those decisions away or whatever. <laughs> but every decision goes through you otherwise. And like directing is mainly just making decisions and answering lots of questions. Um, you know, and so I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting what you said, the question, but uh, that's what I'm trying no, you're, to do. You're actually yeah. getting to, okay. you're actually, whatever I was thinking, like, okay. It, it's yeah, it, it was a, it was a, it's a very collaborative process. There's a lot of people involved. So on Tejano, it was very much me mm -hmm. and it was like I had my crew or whatever and they and, and they had a you know a big say in everything that was going on but I was the director and I was holding the camera and I didn't have um, a video monitor so no one could watch what I was doing mm -hmm. so I was the only one who knew what the movie looked like right and that's a lot of control and it's it's not necessarily the way I want to work I actually like working where people, watch the video monitor and, and, and give me feedback and stuff like that. But I didn't have time on Tejano, mm -hmm. but on Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you know, there's a big video village and there's lots of producers and production designers and script supervisors. They're all watching what you're doing. And then you go and talk to them after you film mm -hmm. and they tell you what their feedback is. And, and then you integrate all that into, into the next shot. Um, and it's fun. It's fun because you come up with mo a lot of ideas that way. You got a lot of interesting feedback and a lot of um, different takes. But as the director, you're the filter. So if you don't want to do something, mm -hmm. you can't. You don't do it. You don't do it. I see. Or that's you act like you're doing it, but you don't do it. You don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's part of the politics, you yeah. know. Like if there's something you don't want to do that 
someone's trying to get you to do, but you don't think it's right. Well, you can sort of, yeah, you, know, yeah, you can kind of do one take and then just kind of forget the idea after that. Or, you know, you can make sure they get it, but then just don't use it in the edit. Um, there's just so many things you can do. It's interesting. I was going to say too, uh, I, I mean, especially, th so I guess that's how you stop the egos there by you deciding what you're going to do and, and all that, right? You mm -hmm. have to, con you have the control to say yes or no. And mm -hmm. I, mean. I, s I think often the easiest thing to do is it depends on who it's coming from too. Cause you don't have to listen to everybody. Right. Mm. But it, if it's like if the studio is telling you or like the producers telling you, you probably want to listen. You know <laughs> what I mean? So you, yeah. you, you give the, you do, you do what they say, you give them your take, but you also can say, you know, well, I want to try it this way. Can we do that? And and they'll let you do that too. That's good. So that, I think that's always good when you can actually let them know, like, hey, I think we can do that, but I also want to try it this or add something yeah. to it or take away. Um, especially whenever it's some like like you said, a team of 190. Yeah. You know, that's a lot of people. <laughs> that's a lot of people. And like here, sometimes we're, we're three of us, and we're like yeah. learning how to, you know. So what are we gonna do next? And how are we gonna do things? Or you were Tejano, you were the one in charge of everything. Mm -hmm. That was that was your 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 um your own project. Mm -hmm. So that jump, did you feel intimidated as I mean, because you were saying you were going in and you're driving and you see miles of, of trailers. Were you like intimidated by by everything that was going on? Or were you more like, you know what? I got this. I was intimidated and then once I started swimming, once I was in I was just going, you know, I was just in my, in my zone. I didn't have time to, to second guess anything. I didn't have time to have imposter syndrome, you know, which is like where you, you don't think you have deserved to be there or anything like that. I, I felt like I deserved to be there and I felt like I knew what I was doing and it felt good, you know, and I was also supported by all those people. No one wants you to fail. They, right. They're all there to help you make a good movie. So um, that was, it was really good to know that, that they were there to help me. And then you also have the actors, right? The actors have their own opinions and about how the movie is going to go, what the, what the characters are going to do. And you have to discuss with them on the performances and come up with something that everyone agrees on in a finite amount of time, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's intense, but the director is really the one who, who is the only person who sees everything. And how it's all going to come together, you know, because you're you're forced to think about everything, so you have probably the clearest picture of the movie, or you should, you know. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. It sounds like fun. It sounds like you you yeah, enjoyed it. I got a lot of, a few more. I came back to Bailey with a few more. I did see that. Yeah. I was gonna say. a little bit more uh, distinction uh, in yes. the hair. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, one thing I wanted to get into was obviously when you're working on a movie like the Hano kind of a lower budget film, <clears throat> and then you, you go to Texas Chainsaw, you got a larger budget. Does that make things does that make things easier, or does it make it harder, and in what ways? I mean, yeah, it's it's a, it's so funny. It's it's not easier and it's not harder. I mean, it's it's got its own challenges, right? Like Tejano is, you know, if you're if you're up against a problem, like your actor can't come to the bridge you just come up with an easy solution, right? And even in big budget filmmaking, you, s you get similar problems like that where you just, an actor is not available or the prop is lost or something. And you just have to come up with a way around it or you have to know how to reschedule it. And it's just all logistics and stuff like that. But I, I would say the harder thing about, I think the big movie is, is there's a lot more, egos, like you were saying, a lot more interactions with a lot more people. Mm -hmm. So that's harder because it's just more um, politicking, I think, yeah. to get to the to get to get the filmmaking. The filmmaking is always the same. The filmmaking is like the camera and the actors. Mm -hmm. And honestly, that's all you need, you know, and the sound as well. But, like, you don't need everything else around it because I did it on Tejano. I mean, we, we, we did it with the minimal amount that you need. Mm -hmm. Um, but then you can start adding all these other things to make it much, much, much better, which is why, you know, why a big budget movie can be like really magical, you know, um, with when all the departments and all the creatives are, 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 are getting their say and, and getting to do their art and put it on screen. Um, but yeah, I think dealing with all those people is hard and like a big movie, 
you know, some things take longer than than it would on Tejano. Right. It's a bigger machine. It's a bigger machine. Yeah. There's more yeah. people to move. There's more things that have to be set up. There's more there's more safety, you know, right. which right. is good. Which is good. I mean Tejano is not always <laughs> Not always you don't the have same. Javi when I have him jump off a roof, you don't got that snake. <laughs> yeah, <Cover. laughs> throwing snakes at actors. Uh, I had Javi jump off a roof, and he was landing on a mattress. Oh, I mean, uh, come on, it's not was very it safe. Like, was it like uh, 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 therapeutic, or was it just like spring? It was like the spring mattress from inside the house. We didn't even tell the guy who lived there that we were using his bed. Oh, we're just like, don't just clean it off and put it back. Just clean it off and put it back. But. Oh, uh, man. Yeah, like so that we did that very fast on Tejano, but on on Texas Chainsaw, then there would have been a stunt team. And they would have had a big wire rig, and it would a harness, and they would have rehearsed with the actor for like a few days before, and ha- rehearsed how they're jumping and turning, and a bunch it, of safety training, so much safety Extras training. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Would, and again, it's all good. It just takes longer. Yeah, you know, it's more for expensive. Sure. So, and yeah. that's what I learned. You know. Could you talk to us a little bit about the horror genre? I know you said sci- sci-fi and horror. You have yeah. some s- certain inclination towards it. Now that you've worked in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you know, what what does that mean to you, that horror that horror movie genre? Yeah, the horror genre, it's um it's an interesting genre. I think it it appeals to me because it's kind of a universal genre. Like everyone, every culture likes to be scared, you know? And and uh, and you don't have to have like a movie star in order to communicate that idea of a character um, being scared of a monster or a ghost or hunted by something because it's a primal fear that you're um, that you're um, you know pulling out of the audience. So I think horror is a really great place to start in film. Uh, I think a lot of my favorite directors uh, started in horror and then worked their way out. Um, not, that's the wrong terminology. They didn't work their way out, but they just worked their way into different genres. Mm-hmm. But like Steven Spielberg's and James Cameron's, even Robert Rodriguez, um, you know, did The Faculty. Uh, Peter Jackson, who did Lord of the Rings, started in horror. Uh, I mean, a lot of these filmmakers that I admire started in this genre and that kind of interests me. But it's something that you can you can play with and 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 toy with. With, uh, I mean, you guys like horror movies, right? Love yeah, horror movies. that's yeah, my yeah, favorite, yeah. actually. It's that's your favorite. favorite. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, like, yeah, it's a popular genre. It's good. It's fun to be scared, um, and you can do it relatively low budget compared to other kind of films. What um, so talking about like say Texas Chainsaw Massacre and and everything that went. Whenever you think of a, like you watching a movie right now, say you're at home. You're like, you know what? I'm gonna watch this movie. Are you somehow nitpicky about watching it? Or like, they could have done this, they could have done that. How yeah. how is that for you? <laughs> I mean, the way it is is like, I still want to watch a movie, and I still want to be transported and enjoy the experience. So I'm gonna always be open to that when I watch a film, and and that happens often, you know, where I watch a good film and I'm just watching the movie, and 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 someone will say, "Oh, well, I love that shot," and I was like, "I don't, I didn't really notice the shot because I was I was in the movie," mm-hmm. you know. But if I if I if I'm not engaged in the story, or I think the actors are bad, or the writing's bad, or something's wrong, then I end up starting to just look at it and pick it apart and see. You can learn a lot more from a bad movie than from a good movie because mm-hmm. in a good movie. I, I watch a good movie to, to, to study it and I just end up watching the movie again and I, <laughs> I learn nothing. But right. a bad movie, I can look and I could pick it apart and I could say, well, that doesn't work and that doesn't work. Right. So, yeah. That's interesting that you say that. Um, I feel like that about projects that I'm on as well. Yeah. I have projects that go really well and I, le- I have obviously I have good learning experiences from them, but any difficult moment, any, any problem or... Uh, difficult um, project experience I feel that has been a greater learning experience in the long run even though at the time kind of sucks <laughs> <laughs> yeah I imagine I imagine working on projects and on construction are very similar to filmmaking in a way 
Except if you fail, then people, the building falls and people <laughs> die. <laughs> true, true. There, 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 there so is it's a, a little more high stakes. The stakes are high. The, there's a lot of, but a lot of the things you were saying, like there's tons of coordination. There's uh, yeah. communication is key and dealing with egos and personalities. And sometimes you have smaller budgets and that yeah. creates its own types of problems and solutions and, and, and ways you deal with things. And, um, that's true. And I, I had never thought about that, about it in that, in that manner, but it does make a lot of sense. And uh, it's funny that you mentioned that as well, because this last project I was on, uh, Hilton Garden Inn, uh, the project manager I worked with went to your high school. Oh, yes. Thomas Reyna. Thomas Reyna. We went to prom, <laughs> <laughs> we went to prom together. <laughs> no. We had dates. <laughs> Not together. We had dates. dates. But together. <laughs> we had dates. But, uh, yeah. No, man. He's a great guy. He's yeah. Great guy. Best, best project manager I've worked with, for sure. Really? Um, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Nice. He's uh, building great things, and you're you're filming great things. Yeah, dude, from Harlingen. From dude. Harlingen, from man. Harlingen. Put on nine five six. <laughs> Put on it. Buy it. Nine five six. <laughs> we got a couple of, of cool people that came out of my class in, in Harlingen. So, right on. Like for right on. You walk into Harlingen High School, and there's like a frame of uh, David, David Blue Garcia, <laughs> right? And the, next know, time I go to Harlingen, I'm just arts. gonna say, oh yeah, I'm friends with David Blue. You know. You go to the, the works, lunch line. He works, he works. <laughs> you go you to the to lunch say. line. Yeah. Uh, do you have your your ID? And I'm like, no, nah, but I'm friends with David. <laughs> <laughs> You're just getting free lunch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like at the school. <laughs> um, I, still got this, I still got a swimming record up there in Harlingen High School. Really? Yeah. Swimming. Mm. swimming. I was a swimmer in, in high school. Um, Dang. But uh, is that how you still stay in shape? You do a no, lot. I don't now? swim. I I can't swim. I mean, I I can <laughs> swim, but like I don't swim anymore. No. I don't believe that. I'll bust out a 50, but I, I can't go much longer than that. <laughs> I'll bust out a 20 it's right now. <laughs> 50 yards. Oh. But like, uh, <laughs> it's just hard, man. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's not the same as what we do in soccer, you know? Yeah, it's, it's like it's a complete totally – like different. if you tried to swim 200 yards, you'd be dead, dead. That reminds me of uh, this past <laughs> summer we went to uh, Wim- Blue Hole, Wimberley. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, and, yeah. Uh, my wife is very, very competitive <laughs> in everything she does, uh, including swimming. <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed. And she, <laughs> she decided to... Uh, Listen to the story. She decided to challenge uh, David, <laughs> our, our illustrious David, to a, to a race. <laughs> and uh, David is a great swimmer from all of everything that I've seen. He's a great swimmer. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I don't know. He, he might beat her. I don't know. I'm not sure. But she's very competitive. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, sure enough... Uh, she smoked him. <laughs> no. And, and the, 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 the worst part, it was that I couldn't breathe. <laughs> yeah, David just ran out of gas. I, oh, I really? couldn't breathe. Yeah, and I was like. How long? I don't know how long it was. It wasn't even long. It was really short. And I just I just couldn't do it, man. Yeah. Like you said, it's just, I don't know. <laughs> I used to be really good at swimming. Yeah. But <laughs> That's what I'm saying. If you don't practice, man, yeah. swimming is it's not like riding a bike. Like you will get <laughs> winded. Now we walked in the blue hole and we all started like hyperventilating because the so pressure cold. of the cold, oh, like yeah. it was just weird. Because I mean, in Barton, I don't get that, but here I'm just like, <gasps> yeah, you know, yeah. But it was it was fun. It was a fun night. Did I ever tell you guys uh, that I I tried out for the Mexican Olympic swim team? Oh, what? really? <laughs> what? Nice. That's a pretty funny story. <laughs> how? how uh, yeah, tell. let us know, man. How how was it? So like, okay, I wasn't. I was uh, in college already at UT. Mm-hmm. And um, I get a call. There's some coach from the Valley. I used to be a swimmer in the Valley, right? And I had, I was pretty good. I would win the Valley. I would, I would, I was the f- fastest swimmer in the Valley. Mm-hmm. <coughs> you know, Shoot. me and this other guy. Yeah. And we would swim at state, um, like we swam in the NUT at the state championship at 5A, like two years in a row. But we would always get killed at state. Nice. This is like all the tall white guys, man. They're going <laughs> to kill you, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. No, like it's funny because you were like, we used to get killed at state. And then Coco was like, nice. Kill that state. No, no, no. We got killed. <laughs> I'm like, sorry. What? We got, so we nice. got we were still the, nice. <laughs> we were the worst. We were the worst. Um, <laughs> and we were region eight. And the slowest lane is lane eight. And so we were region eight, lane eight every time. But. That is to say that we weren't that good, but there was a coach from the Valley who somehow convinced the Mexican government to pay for a bunch of people from the Valley to yeah. come down and compete at a, a meet in Acapulco mm-hmm. um, to try out for the Mexican swim team. And if we were fast enough, they would have given us Mexican citizenship. 
Because my grandparents are from Mexico, they would yeah. have given me citizenship. Mm-hmm. Okay. Just if I was fast, right? Yeah. <laughs> <I'd be> fast. <laughs> and my coach, and I was like, I was like, I, I was like, I'm not that good. And like, I'm also out of practice. Yeah. I'm out of shape. Whatever. So I went down there and, and I realized um, in my first event, I was seated as the fastest guy <laughs> in the event. And I'm looking around and I'm like, everyone is like 6'3", six, 6'4", six, like really Pretty big oh, yeah. Mexican dudes, uh-huh. huge dudes. And I'm like, coach, what's going on? And I realized that he didn't convert my times from yards to meters. <laughs> <laughs> Meters are longer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so when it comes down to it, I'm looking like the fastest guy. I'm like at world record time <laughs> at this meet. And I'm just like this shrimpy little guy <laughs> compared to these guys. And there was another, um, there, was a, an Ameri- <laughs> there was an American swimmer there, Jason Lezak, who is a gold medal Olympian. Yeah, yeah. And he, yep. he has swam the fastest 100 meter time of any American up to that point in a relay. He was one of the fastest men on earth. And he was swimming next to me, <laughs> slower than me. Wow. Uh, and he was swimming exhibition just for fun. Mm-hmm. He wasn't trying out. He's an American guy. And, uh, dude, they smoked me, dude. Yeah, like I, I swam, and I remember just being seeing their legs just <laughs> kicking in front of me. And That's I was just, what I remember seeing in Madison. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that was how I almost made the Mexican <laughs> Olympic team, guys. Almost made. Wow. Hey, that's a that's an anecdote right there. Pretty dude. close. Yeah, but not 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 close. <laughs> <laughs> did you? Uh, when, did I, you? I, when I got out, I told Jason, I was like, "Dude, my my arm hurts, man." I was. I got. I, heard I was it. really. I heard it surfing. <laughs> 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 and he laughed at me. <laughs> <laughs> like oh, sure, they're like yeah. Hey, I wasn't the one that messed up with the calculations, man. <laughs> I heard about a story. I think it was like something, and in, in maybe I could be wrong, or maybe it's science fiction. But there was like a rocket that went on space, but they didn't convert the, you know, the com- measurement conversions, and then like just a bunch of money lost in that project. Yeah, is that true? Well, I mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Cooking with the NASA, dude. You're yeah. the one. No, you got the insights. <laughs> I hate to disappoint y'all, but I, I cannot verify that that's no. factual. Um, I, I just I'll, heard I'll, it. I'll get back to you. All right, cool. He will for sure. Actually, it was the calculations that he did at space camp. <laughs> <laughs> the they took those. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it, it just makes sense though. Like if yeah. something is not correct there. For example, yo, Al, whenever we had the barbecue. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sure. I, th- I don't know if you were here already or not, but we celebrated Vidal's birthday uh, in the in the at Bailey's mm-hmm. at a good old fashioned carne asada. Yeah, and then we see you all come in with like a small little, you know, two piece, you know, bag of marinated. like marinated chicken. We're like, dude, what's the rest? He's like, man, I had told him, you know, two, but like two what? He's like, I don't know, I forgot. I don't know, two kilos or two two pounds, but I'm like, you That's could have said that times three, dude, yeah. something. But he shows up, and I think someone else went to get some more food, but if that would have been it, and it was like 20 of us, it would have been like this much for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Just get a Costco sampler. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I can I can see that problem, you Measure- know. Measurements are important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Measurements are important. Yeah, uh, I, you know. Man. What if they would have gotten there right, and you would have been at the right, you know, bracket. You could have gone to the Olympics. Could have. You know, like it could be either directing movies or going to the Olympics, one, so one or two. We need to try out for the for the soccer team now. Bailey's will we'll convince the Mexican government to bring us down for a tournament. That'd be awesome. <laughs> I think I think we'd come away with at least three red cards. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're really good at that. Yeah. No, it's funny because we were uh, on Saturday. Coke comes to me. He's like, dude, if anyone wants to challenge us right now, five on five, we got the team. <laughs> I was like, he's about to go out, like call people out. Like, hey, you want to play? We got five. Let's go to the parking lot. There's a ball. <laughs> and I was like, I would not be surprised. <laughs> Always ready, man. Always ready, dude. Yeah. Nah, but um, talking. So going back to Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I like how we went from <laughs> Texas know. Chainsaw and the horror movies to like the Olympics. It's a bit all over the place. Yeah. What uh, whenever so you were you were filming in a pandemic, um. What was, how different was that compared to regular times? Like, what was the challenge? Well, you got to understand, understand, I'd never done a studio movie to begin with. So mm-hmm. I, you know, 
It's hard to tell. That was the biggest difference to me. The pandemic was just, you know, they poke your nose every two days and you get tested and then you wear a mask all the time. Mm -hmm. That was it. Um, I mean, that wasn't it. But from what I noticed as a director, that was like the major thing that was different. Mm -hmm. They had to clear the set and spray everything down with aerosol things, um, you know, every couple of minutes. Um, What else do they... I guess... um, I'm very, uh, I can be very sarcastic uh, when I'm working and joking around and, and and my face is covered. And so people don't even know if I'm joking because mm-hmm. they can't even see my expression. You know yeah. what I mean? It's hard to so, read So yeah, yeah, it's, and they're Bulgarian too. So a even less barrier. so, yeah, there's like a language barrier. So like people had no idea if I was serious sometimes. Yeah. And I was like, I, okay, <laughs> I got to stop joking around. Because yeah. <laughs> I, uh, one time, okay, here's the story. So. They, uh, there's some shit in the movie, right? And so they have to make <laughs> some fake shit, right? The art department or wherever, they, they bring me this bucket of shit. To, and I told you, directors, it's just decision-making, right. right? And they say, what do you think of this, this shit? This is the shit that we're going to use. This is the shit we're going to use. And they, like, scoop it, and I'm looking at it, consistency. <laughs> and I go, yeah, yeah. And I and I'm just joking, and I'm like, uh, needs more corn. <laughs> and, then I, and I was joking, and and I walked away, and then they bring it back to me later, and they, they oh, like, it's got all this corn in it, and I was like, no, 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 I was joking, sorry, just oh, take the God. corn out, that's ridiculous. Someone's picking up corn <laughs> out of the shit because I made some stupid joke. I made this poor art department guy pick all the sh- the corn out of the shit. He would have. He probably was mad. Man. Yeah, I know. So he's like, <laughs> that's when I that's when I learned to stop fucking with the Bulgarians. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing about the Bulgarians is that um, I would ask them questions like I would say, "Well, can we get this or can we do this or whatever?" And they'd always be kind of shaking their head like that, like kind of shaking their head back and forth, and I. <laughs> And I'd be like, you know? And they'd be like, yeah, we can do it. And I was like, yes or no? These guys are like really negative. <laughs> and then someone told me later, like, oh, Bulgarians, when they say yes, they sh- they shake their head back and forth. Uh, it might not quite, it's not quite like the Indian, the in, you know how the Indians do it? But it's it's like a similar sort of thing, but it looks like they're saying no. Oh, gotcha. Okay. And so <laughs> it's backwards. He was all mad. Like, I was always <laughs> like, dude, these guys don't want to do anything. <laughs> They just told me no. <laughs> so that was the other, oh, the other thing with the Bulgarians that I, I had to get used to. Uh, but they're great. They're great people, um, really hard workers, super creative, you know. How was the food? Uh, did you get to try some Bulgarian, yeah, Bulgarian, they, Bulgarian they would, food? Or they would feed us Bulgarian food, lots of like cold soups and yogurts and weird stuff like that. Um, I didn't really like the yogurty things, but um, like I like the grilled meats and the... Dude, I really don't know, man. I, I ate a lot of stuff, and I would just like, sure. I would just eat it, and mm-hmm. it was fuel at that point. point. <laughs> like literal, so literal. Survival. Yeah, like their 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 breakfast taco was like a piece of toast with like this Bulgarian cheese and this like special pepper that they put on it, mm-hmm. and that's what they would. That was like their breakfast taco, and I would eat that a lot. Um, but I would also eat like a. I started eating like a boiled egg and a banana every like two hours. That was like what I would eat. And I had an assistant and she would just follow me around. And when I would start to get a little cranky, she would just (laughs) hand me a boiled egg and a banana and I would eat it. Nice. And that would calm you down. Yeah, it would calm me down. (laughs) (laughs) She'll see like, she'll see David Blue like this. And she's like, oh, okay, get the bananas, get the eggs. (laughs) When I started to get a little like frustrated or something, you know. Because I, I would get hangry, you know. Yeah. I wish you would have told us, man. Yeah, we would have got, got chickens. Like, so like, we got chickens, dude. We got chickens. We oh, could have supplied you with. Oh, shit. We would have, like, fed you some If I'm eggs. ever, if we're ever playing at Bailey and I get out of hand, just give me a, 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 a banana that's, or something. That's a, that's a thing, dude. <laughs> <laughs> just calm this guy down. <laughs> <laughs> no, I imagine, like, I imagine, like, your reaction. <clears> and then I imagine, like, what's going on over there. I'm just picturing that right now. And you'd be like, oh, darn it. I'm trying to get this done. And they probably a lot of corn. <laughs> they don't get my they don't too get much my, corn guys too much corn yeah <laughs> that's a, that's the next joke every time somebody does instead of saying let's try mucha crema tus tacos you put man man way. chill out with the corn <laughs> <laughs> hey so blue are you able to tell us like a little bit of uh 
why you're filming in Bul- why it was filmed in Bulgaria, or is that something that you're not allowed to talk about? I mean, I, I can talk about it. I think I think um, if you look at a lot of movies, a lot of movies are being filmed overseas. Um, well, you know, Hollywood films are being filmed in Hungary and you know Romania, Serbia, you know, uh, Bulgaria, all these places um, because uh, there's really good crews there, really good incentives. Um, they give you tax breaks, etc. If you film. And I think, in general, the the crews might be cheaper than the American crews, the American equivalent. So studios are, I mean, it's not great for American crews to be honest. Um, where you know people are losing losing work here, losing jobs um, overseas because it is cheaper to go there. And I think that's what happens. I think it comes down to money. Um, but there's still plenty of stuff being shot here in the states. It also might come down to it's, it's really busy here in the States. Like yeah. there's only so many stages, sound stages in North America. And a lot of them are booked. A lot of them are full. There's TV shows shooting, there's movies shooting. Um, so they got to go somewhere else to, to make this stuff. But from what I understand, I think it was cheaper to build a Texas town in Bulgaria than to film here. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. Because we didn't idea. have to like, close down any streets or anything like yeah. that yeah know? that's crazy i i never thought about that mm-hmm. like i thought it was just more for safety protocols of covid you can shoot there but not here well that that was another okay big one but the thing is the movie was already i think gonna shoot there before covid so okay. that doesn't have that much to do with it but it was one of the few countries that was like allowing production at the time because the states was kind of shut down right and so one thing that w- one thing that comes with obviously directing is yes, you're doing your first um, break in film that's bigger production. You know that there's going to be fame that's going to come with that. A lot of questions asked, a lot of uh, you know things that you probably going to be like, "I'm here, dude. I'm famous, bro." Yeah. <laughs> now how how do you, how do you feel like regarding that aspect of you know staying humble or or you know just staying in touch with yourself um, because who knows like. Where would this take you afterwards once it's released and everybody watches it and they like it and you pick up more projects and your name starts coming out more? Mm-hmm. What, what goes through your mind regarding that aspect? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. I, I don't know if I'll be famous from this one movie, but um, it is it is interesting being recognized. Like, I, I've already been recognized before, even before this movie. I, one time, I had just made Tejano mm-hmm. and... Uh, I was in downtown and this parking lot attendant came up to me. Mm-hmm. He's like, David, David Garcia. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, I saw your video online about how you made your movie. Dude, it's good to meet you, man. You know, and it's like yeah. shaking my hand or whatever. So like you, I mean, you guys are doing this, your face is online. People are, might recognize you, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, it's just interesting, right? Like that you put something out in the world and it, it, it touches somebody yeah. and the, Koke came back to soccer because of my video. You know what I mean? So <laughs> you guys are doing podcasts. You're interviewing city council members. I mean, you're someone's gonna gonna watch that and they might recognize you. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you can't let that go to your head, yeah. right? You know, um, and and I don't. It's not going to for me. I, That's I, good. I hope not. I don't think I'm going to be that famous though, to be honest. But uh, um, I'll gladly do the publicity that's required of me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like talking to people. So I'm excited to see what that brings. And also, like, you know, the way Hollywood, Hollywood seems to be working now is that, you know, they, they, do, they do factor in Instagram and TikTok followers and stuff. So maybe I should be trying to get more really? famous. So are you going to open maybe up your own all. TikTok now and do maybe, challenges? Maybe, maybe I should do a TikTok. To, you're going to have to do the dances and all, man. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we should do a soccer TikTok. <laughs> we'll, but, be, uh, we'll be a famous CJ. Yeah. A famous CJ quote. <laughs> <clears throat> but do, do I not CJ, see what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> has my ego been out of control like have I yeah, man, nah, since nah. you got back <laughs> such years. a diva yeah dude, you come back and like you it's just, too hot you just need a bowl uh, you need more banana bananas more <laughs> eggs <laughs> dude that, honestly I love it dude, too much corn guys <laughs> I love it man because like dude being a director like when you're the director like you have to, you have all the you have a lot of control a lot of power and like everyone's listening to you mm-hmm. but then you come home 
and you're not the director anymore. And no one gives <laughs> David sh- no one gives a shit who you are. <laughs> Robbie's like, like, hey, go take out this trash cover. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. People like tell you what to do. Yeah. Uh, you know, a waiter the other day like scolded me for doing something or being somewhere in the restaurant I wasn't supposed to be. And Holy I, I was like, <laughs> I was like, I'm a tr- no, I'm not. I'm not a yeah. director. I just like walk away, you know, it's like, <laughs> I like, you know, I like, and I like playing soccer yeah. and, and you guys are yelling at me like, go over there. Like you're in the wrong place. And I'm like, cool. I, I like it. You get that beat getting mad at you for, we, you know, making we, the wrong path. I like it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't want to be, I don't want to be in yeah. charge all the time. So. That's always good, man. Yeah. Now, trust me, if ever that comes to that point, you got a, a group of guys here that were like, hey, wait, you want to play soccer? We know how to calm you down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I tried to get a, a game in Bulgaria together, yeah. but it never worked out. Yeah. So Did you bring your soccer ball in there? Just to game? relieve all the stress. Yeah, there yeah. was a guy in the office. He found out I played, and, and he was, like, trying to organize a game um, near the studio, but we never did it. So, I think that should be the one thing. You that have to go every through time. you. That's why you didn't yeah. work. Well, next time, next time I do a movie um, – I will request it in my contract. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> you have to put it on your writer. Hey, no, I don't, at least I want a five on five. You yeah, know? I want yeah. a Every five t- on five at lunch. Yeah. There we go. Every yeah. Tuesday, Thursday. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my goal, man. If I if I get there, I'm like, I've made it. And then you're going to be like, and I want I want guys that are nicknamed like this. David, Coque, Joao, Vidal, Richie. Or best yet, if I, if I do, if I get to film in Texas, I'll just bring you guys out. Yeah. And they, <laughs> they pay you guys will, to be there. Oh, we will gladly Dude, we'll, we, would, we, would, we will we help will. you carry cable. Yes, just whatever you need, As man, long as you put me you need. cable carrier, you know. This is my soccer team. They come with me. <laughs> and we just play games. Yeah, they keep me insane. <laughs> this eggs and bananas. I don't, I don't do the movie. You pick. Yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> do you have a, now that you're done with this, um, with Texas Chainsaw Massacre, is there a, in a specific date when it'll be released or? They haven't said. No? No. Netflix picked it up and it's kind of in their hands right now. Okay. They'll, okay. they'll, they're going to look at all their, their crystal ball of data <laughs> and they're going to determine when the best time to release it on streaming is, you know. Okay. Okay. But they, they're a data driven company, I believe, yeah. and, and they have a lot of. They know what you watch. They know exactly what we watch. Yeah. How long yeah. we watch. Yeah. Do you guys all see the Squid Game thing? I'm watching. Oh, I watched yeah. the first two not episodes. Yet. I've been holding out. I'm not gonna say it, but it, it's good. No, not yet. It's. It, I like it. I mean, it's good. You know, it, it's it's different. Especially, it's I wanted different. to watch it, but not in the English like audio. I wanted to watch it with the Korean audio mm. and do the subtitles because I feel mm. like. It gives it more of a different feeling. Yeah. Like, yeah, I don't want, I'm not much of a, like, I'm not a, like, a big, like, I, I know everything about movies, but just in that aspect, I wanted to hear the voice of the person that's talking yeah. rather than hear someone that's, you know, doing the voiceover. I think that, that that's what got me that. That makes a huge difference. That's that's what we did, actually, and it worked out pretty well. Actually. Uh, just, uh, like, the feeling of what they're saying, yeah. it's, it's different, and I felt like it was cool. You watched it? Yeah, I watched it, but it was in Korean, just subtitles. Oh, okay. Yeah. So well, your your wife, she's, co- she's Korean. She's half Korean. Oh, she's yeah. Half Korean. Yeah, that's why, oh. too. But she doesn't speak Korean anymore, right. but, yeah. Um, is she from here, is, or where is she, she, she was she's uh She was born here in Austin, but uh-huh. moved to West Laco in the Valley. That's oh, why I know oh, the Valley. Oh, okay. Because okay. whenever she, she, she travels over there, she goes and uh, meets friends or whatever. Yeah. We go over there, and, and that's, that's how I know. That's awesome. Harlan Jen and all that. That's McAllen awesome. Callen and all those little towns. Yeah. Yeah. I know Nuevo Progreso. Yeah. Because I, I crossed there before. Oh, okay. Yeah, the little tunnel and all that. Yeah, little little tiny town. Yeah. A lot of dentist office. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Speaking <Yes>. of that. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. no, I can't go, but uh, like I know someone that was like, hey, can you help me call someone to see how much they can charge me for, for a dental work? Uh-huh. And then I did a like a Google Maps research. There's like literally five offices right mm-hmm. across the bridge. Yep. I'm like, what the heck? A lot of people do that. They just yeah. go across and get serviced. It's cheaper. Yeah. 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 You can get it. You know, you can get like a root canal for like two or three hundred bucks. You know, over here it's like a thousand, right? Yeah. yeah. With Dang. insurance. With insurance. And it's. What can, what can we do? <laughs> <laughs> but now, nah, um, so talker, you know, movies. And directing, what's the? Do you have another project coming up? Um, so I'm like, my job right now is you know my agents send me scripts and um, 
things that are under de- development with different studios. And I, you know, I kind of say yes or no. And uh, there's a couple of projects that I've been interested in. And I'm, I'm talking with the producers and, uh, you know, meeting with the studios. And I have to basically convince them to let me direct the movie. Mm. And that's like, I'm kind of in a job interview sort of state. Okay. Gotcha. I'm also writing um, two screenplays, um, one of which kind of takes place in the valley. So another valley story. And it, and it has to do, it's a horror movie um, that has to do, it's kind of like Get Out, but for, you know, the Mexican-American experience. Um, it's n- plot-wise not similar to Get Out at all. But what I mean is it's like dealing with an issue through a metaphor that through the horror genre so i think it's interesting so i don't know i mean uh i'd like to finish writing that maybe get y'all's get y'all's take on it that's awesome man yeah (laughs) this guy right here will give i just be like hey black white yellow green (laughs) but right here he'll just be like the shade of black the shade of white the shade of yellow (laughs) and then i'll be like yep let's go i'll be like that's it man let's do it (laughs) yeah and uh, that's that's good um i feel like you're gonna be a reference to a lot of the movie stuff that or projects that are shot in the valley or in the border for some reason especially when it comes up to yeah um horror yeah i mean i i mean i don't know why i keep going see I, the valley i keep going back to the valley i don't even live there back. i don't live there but it's like my it's home yeah my dreams are i dream in the valley you know what i mean mm-hmm. that's where it's home that's where you were born and raised so there's something about i mean do you think about yeah salvador yeah. i mean mm-hmm. it's part Same. of you yeah yeah it's always it's like connected in a way. Yeah, always. yeah. It's in your subconscious, right? right? Mm-hmm. And you, are you. Uh, I'm from Houston. You're from Houston. Born in Houston. Okay, but, but you just spent a lot of time in Mexico. Right. First, I'm first generation, first so generation. I would go back a lot to Miguel Aleman, San Luis Potosí. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you're also Salvador. Salvadorian because you're yeah, your mom I, or your dad, right? My mom. Yeah, my mom's side. So I, I, I would visit El Salvador, just not as often. So um, when I think of that home, that heritage, I, I think right. Mexico comes more to the forefront because mm-hmm. I would go so much but um yeah it's interesting how home keeps calling you back and how, mm-hmm. how texas is such a important part of of your body of work um do you do you kind of have the sense that you will continue to do um work in texas or do you also have that feeling that you want to go beyond beyond the state and to something else that uh, perhaps you haven't done well i, I do want to go beyond the state but like i, I keep i'm writing to like, texas movies you know i just keep coming up with stories yeah. that w- need to be told here. Right. Um, and, it, you know, I've done two Texas movies already. One shot in Bulgaria, but, uh, <laughs> you know, but... Uh, it took Texas to Bulgaria. Though. Yeah, I don't mind. I don't mind exploring Texas. I think it's, it's interesting. And in the, in the one horror film I'm writing, it deals with, like, immigration. It deals with identity. It deals with, like, assimilation, which is, like, a big thing. No one talks about assimilation, but, you know, right. um, people that come here from other countries and choose to completely assimilate rather than to hold on to their old culture. You know, Mm -hmm. I want to explore like what causes somebody to do that, you know, as opposed to, to being a little more traditional, you know what I mean? So that's, I mean, I would say it's a very, a lot of people that, you know, that say from Mexico, they want to keep the Mexican thing and they don't, I guess, cause maybe it's close to, you know, like right next to the U S but let's say for example, someone that comes from Asia, they will assimilate. They will have to assimilate a lot faster than someone that you know that is from Mexico. Just because over here, you go, I would say, to a store, there's gonna be someone that speaks Spanish, and they can help you. But let's say you're someone who's Filipino or Taiwanese, and you need help, it's like you're gonna have to learn how to how to speak it. So that that's gonna be an interesting you know take on how do you find those stories? Yeah, yeah. Like my grandmother um, lived in the valley for 50 60 years um she's passed now but she only spoke spanish never learned english never wanted to you know she didn't need it she didn't need it right. yeah but my dad um you know he learned spanish first and then and then english and then he he completely assimilated he didn't want to speak spanish anymore so my, and then when he raised me I, he didn't teach me any spanish mm-hmm. because he didn't want me to speak that at all he wanted me to be american completely so that's kind of what I'm, the, the story is about, you know, yeah. why he chose to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of people like me, uh, second generation, mm-hmm. who don't speak any Spanish. We have very little 
connection to our heritage. Mm -hmm. And it's always been kind of an issue for me. You know, I've always felt like, you know, I should have been able to talk to my grandmother, but I didn't understand her. You know, um, she died when I was really young, but you know, I still didn't understand her. And, um, and I feel disconnected from that part of my family. You know, the, the side of my family that all continues to speak in, uh, Spanish, mm-hmm. much like you guys. You guys are all bilingual and, you mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. that's part of your life. But, um, you know, my dad's side of the family is like that. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we're me and my brother, we're, we're very Americanized, so we don't really get to to share in that heritage like they do. So are you going to try to, like, connect with that part of the family eventually? Yeah. Um, Yeah, I mean, I, I we they came to my brother's. My brother got married in the spring, and, and and some of my my cousins came, and it was really good to see them. You know, so we, I, I get to visit them. They a lot of them live in California, okay, like in the Oakland area or the the Bay Area, and um, so I visit them occasionally. But uh, yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, man. That's I think whenever you you're born from different cultures, it's it's a a blessing. You know. Because mm-hmm. you get different perspectives of life, you you learn a lot of things. I mean, just from from even David from El Salvador, you know how everything is over there here, and then you like H Town or Houston, but and you're you know from the Valley like that, especially when you're creating something that's going to be put in film for, for a picture to watch. That that's golden. But uh, anything else you gonna you guys want to add to this conversation? Uh, Dave, if you just let, us, let let our audience know where they can uh, view the Hano and uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre when it, whenever it's released, uh, that'd be great, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can uh, Google me, David Blue Garcia, and you'll see a lot of things, a lot of pictures. One of <laughs> <laughs> very handsome. Emmy there, Award winner. There, there's one picture of me that I, I love because some guy commented and he said, "Looks like an Andy Sandberg character." <laughs> <laughs> and I always remember that because I gotta. Now I'm reading all the comments that people write about me online, and it's not. It's all. It's not very good. I mean, people, oh. people talk shit about you. They don't even know who you are. Yeah. It's just so funny. But trolls. Yeah, Google me. You find stuff. But I mean, uh, Tejano is. I mean. It's. I don't think it's on HBO anymore. I think the contract expired, but mm-hmm. it, it, you can find you can rent it on like iTunes or YouTube and all that stuff. Google Play, um, and then te- and Texas Chainsaw is going to be on Netflix. You're in, you know if you have Netflix, you'll it'll be there. Man, I tell Mentions you what. Whenever it's ready, we're gonna have a it's viewing party. We yeah. should do it. Yeah. We should. We uh, are gonna. We got. We got uh, someone that has a projector. I know. You know? So, Rosie yeah, has one. <laughs> I'll I'll host uh, or somebody can host. Like a, a viewing party, we can get get that together and get the crew together. Get some food. food. Yeah, Let's do maybe, it. maybe even get a theater. Maybe if I can oh, get that together. There we go. We'll bring the carne asada. Well, we, if, if we want to do that, we have to go to Harlingen, right? That's what you said. Oh, we used to work. We got to go all the way to Harlingen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got to go to the one you worked. Hey, at, man. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. The AMC. I, I, I'm still like, if I can go to that side of town, let me let me check on my clearance really quick in my background. <laughs> Yeah, man. <laughs> Be careful with the border checkpoint, man. I know, yeah. dude. So now I can I can go to the border. I just can't okay. cross over. Okay. But I've gone to Big Bend, and I'm like, Mexico's right there, and I'm right here. But I don't go over there. Like I stay on the yeah on the soil. Yeah. All right. So yeah. But yeah, dude. I really I'm really looking forward to you know whenever the movie comes out. You know, thinking like, hey, just do something. That's a cool movie, man. It's gonna be fun. It's a uh, scary. It's a uh, gory. Gory as hell. Oh. I love it. I love yes. It. <laughs> My wife is going to be like this. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of good kills. Lots of good kills. Yeah. Can't yeah. wait. Can't wait. Um, I just want to say thank you for taking the time, coming over here and talking to us. Uh, appreciate it. Appreciate you. Thank you for inviting me, man. This is, I've been looking forward to this. And when he mentioned that you guys were doing this, you know, I was waiting for my invite. I was like, <laughs> what's it going to happen? Dude, yeah. I was literally waiting to first get the camera so we can be on camera. And then learn about like how to run it, and obviously we had some you know difficulties at first because you know the whole <laughs> have to turn something on, something off. Well, they don't have to know about that. Yeah, right? they don't have to know about that. <laughs> yeah. They, they probably don't care. It's magic. Uh, it's magic over here. But uh, I was just I've always wanted to like man, I'm just waiting for that to. I want to get that so I can let them know like all right, dude, let's do this. But I'm just I thought about inviting you in the first ones, but then you know not to get away from anyone that has come. Right. But for me, it's just like nah, I gotta. It has to be visual. Like it can't just be. You know, in a 
in a Spotify and Apple Podcast. Like it has to be, yeah. you know, on YouTube as well. So Dave is a visual man, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, and also appreciate like you know I've been like for me is I've been doing like some photo stuff, and you're always you're you've been sending me like good information that I've been literally practicing on and yeah. stuff. So that's very helpful. Very, very helpful. Yeah, we'll keep it up, man. Keep it up. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, it, thanks, man. We wish you the best in, in, in your career and uh, your future endeavors, man. Honestly, it's, uh, it's a beautiful thing to see how you've rallied around certain communities and decided to um, uh, extend that voice of, of our people um, to the big screen, you know. It's, yeah. It, it's a great thing to see. It makes it get, representation matters. Um it makes us feel good knowing that obviously not only that we know you, but that we come from similar backgrounds and you're able to do something in the creative field um, that you're passionate about. And we, we know the sacrifices that, that, it, that, it, that you've done and um, we know that it's paying off in, in its own way. Yeah. It means a lot. And it's also great to get to know you guys a little more, even in the setting, you know, uh, hear a little bit more about your backgrounds as well so for sure man yeah if you ever want you know need references about yeah i think you have you asked a couple of questions about hey you know what do you i think one one of one i'm not gonna say names or, or whatnot but i was just like we can do some research we can yeah yeah, yeah. We can get you, we can get you some stories or we can get you something i mean yeah i mean Guys, don't be surprised if your names show up in one of my movies. <laughs> hey, <laughs> inspired by. <Yeah. laughs> how many eggs and how many bananas do you like a day? <laughs> <laughs> we're yeah. we're going to have to deliver that directly to him. Yeah, yeah, just just like the community of the Valley helped you out in town. I know that us, us three right here, and including Bailey, we're always down to help you out. For sure. Yeah, yeah, man. Cool. But, hey, you know, I look forward to playing with you on tomorrow. Tuesday? You guys still playing? <laughs> Soccer? Yeah, yeah. You gonna play? Maybe. No Why? Might. Maybe. Might, you might get. Are y'all starting trip. earlier? Or you might. Or you. Or you <laughs> might just like go back to Bulgaria and do something else. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> yeah, I come out. I come All out. right, cool. Yeah, well, hey, thank you for listening, um, and appreciate all of you guys, David. Acuérdense de seguirnos. Estamos en en Spotify. Ahí estamos en Instagram. Otra por favor. Síganos, por favor, y, y gracias por escucharnos. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for listening. Please share with your family and friends. Otra, por favor. Órale. Ahí se portan bien. Chao.